Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and uh, another Friday Reads, two in a row. I am getting better and better at these Friday Reads. <laughs> anyway, the books I read, um, still reading and started as always, and we start with the books that I finished. Isn't that a nice sort of dichotomy? I know, I'm in a silly mood and my t-shirt is crumbled and you just have to roll with it. Um, anyway, so the first book I read was a short little translated piece of nonfiction, um, How to Be a Fascist, a manual by Michela Murgia, an Italian writer and translated from the Italian by Alex Valente. The Italian um, was published in 2018 and this one, the English translation in 2020. This was one of my picks for nonfiction November for the prompt treatment because I regard translated fiction and nonfiction as treatment. So the translation is a treatment of the text. You know me. I'm just fitting the books into the prompts with force. Uh, but this was also, um, that's why I wanted to, uh, to read it, uh, another reason why I wanted to read it, because this was also the pick for a November for Mel's book club, Read Around the World book club. Um, it's a tiny little book, um, and um, the author, uh, Michela Morgia, is an Italian activist and writer, a political writer. And this one is a satirical look at the state of our Western democracy. It's not Italian-focused, so it's really broader, Western uh, democracy. And the um, the idea behind it is... Let's let's become fascists because we are on the best way anyway, and let's embrace it. I mean, I'm, you know, it, it it's a bit more complicated than that, and she is not as superficial as that. But that's the gist. So it is satirical. It is fun to read. Uh, I had to laugh out loud uh, at times, but it's also. Um, confrontational in a way. If you look at our democracy from this point of view. Um, let's become fascist. It gives a new flavor to the discussion. So I, I really, really enjoyed it um, as a short, entertaining, but also educational read. Um, the second book I finished, um, I read as an ebook, and that is a memoir, Heart Berries, uh, by Therese uh, Marie Mayet. That's how I learned it is pronounced. If it's wrong, tell me, but... That's how Trevor Noah pronounces, and I'm uh, assuming that he knows what he does. Trevor Noah. Yeah, is it Noah Trevor? I'm in a state of slight confusion today. Um, uh, this is a memoir of an indigenous writer growing up uh, on a small uh, reservation in British Columbia and coming of age as an indigenous person slash indigenous woman. Um, it is not um, a, a straightforward, um, linear telling of her growing up. It's more in, in the, ch there are obviously chapters, and those chapters center around a certain theme, and it's more, um, yeah, almost lyrical uh, exploration of her childhood. Uh, there are certain themes that come back again and again. Um, but I have to say, even though I really appreciated the language and I thought it was written beautifully, the memoir part for me personally was too heavy on the uh, her relationships with men and uh, how, how that, her divorce and how that all developed. Uh, and I had expected more about her experience as an indigenous person, indigenous woman in particular. So for me, it did not quite work, but give it a try because a lot of people loved it. And the language for sure is beautiful. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I read Heartberries for Nonfiction November reading more nonfiction, not for a particular prompt, because I picked this book after I already decided on the books that I would pick for prompts, because there's also Indigitha, which I always miss every year. 
but I think it was Courtney Ferreter who made a video and she reminded me. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm sure I can squeeze in one or two books uh, by Indigenous authors. So this one, uh, Hardberries, was what I read for Indigathon. And I even fulfilled a prompt, a book recommended by one of the organizers. Um, and I will just leave the Instagram, Indig uh, Indigathon Instagram uh, link uh, down below. You can find all the information there and links to the organizers. So that was the, the Hardberries. Uh, then on to the books that I'm still reading. And I'm just still reading this uh, chunky book, uh, Margaret George, Helen of Troy. Uh, um, published a while ago, um, uh, I forgot, 2006, um, and this is a buddy read with Kim from Middle of the Book March. We will have our next check-in this weekend. Um, we're reading 20 chapters um, a week, and it's 80 chapters, so we wanted to spread it out over the uh, month. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by Greek myth. I told you in the last video when I said that I will start this book that this is one of my yeah, since childhood, almost, obs no, not obsessions, it's not, but it, it, it's a real deep interest in Greek myth. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated whenever I read something, and this is the account of Helen of Troy's life, a fictional person, and this is a fictionalized account of her. her. But so far, the book just doesn't really do it for me. I mean, I read uh, um, one Margaret George, she's a historical writer of historical fiction, and I read um, a book about Nero, young Nero, and didn't quite like it, but thought maybe, you know, I should try something else. But so far, I'm pretty bored. Uh, it's very, very slow. It's like she, if I compare it to a book like Madeline Miller's Circe, it's also a, a myth, mythical figure that doesn't exist. And Madeline Miller made um, a, a novel about Cersei's life. That is so much more engaging. There's so much more in, uh, inventive storytelling. And this is, yeah. But we will we'll see uh, when we check in. Uh, maybe it will pick up. But so far, uh, unfortunately, it's not um, an immense success for me. Then on to the books that I started last week. And the first one is also for nonfiction, a November and a buddy read with Heidi from my reading life. This book, um, Atlas of Poetic, no, it doesn't work. Atlas of Poetic uh, Zoology by Emmanuel Puydebat. The illustrations are by uh, Julie Terras Terrasoni and it's translated from the French by Eric Butler, can you see this? And it's uh, um, uh, the, the author, um, Emmanuel Poudibat, she works um, at the French National History Muse Museum, so she is a scientist. And this book is about a collection of, I don't know, 20, 30 animals she picked um, because there is something peculiar or interesting uh, to tell about these animals. It's very short chapters. It's just a, a page and a half, mostly. And then there is illustrations um, on, on the other side of this particular animal. So it's really a, a book, um, a delightful book also to look at. Um, and um, Heidi and I will have our first, not our first, we will we just read the, uh, the book this week and we'll finish this weekend. And I don't want to spoil my check-in uh, with Heidi like I did with Kim with the last book. Sorry about that, Kim. But I don't think Heidi will be surprised if I tell you it's an absolute delight. And boy, oh boy, is nature weird. I mean, there are, just Google Sea Angel. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, um, it, it's, it's creatures in on land, sea, birds, everything. Um, and she has four, um, uh, yeah, four big chapter breaks uh, with a theme. So, for instance, camouflage or uh, how how they uh, uh, mate, the mating rituals, and it's just yeah, it's absolutely amazing. So, if you want to read something, you know, yeah, if you want to delight in something, also how it looks, because again. I mean, 
you know, it's just wonderfully done by the illustrator here, uh, Julie Terrasoni. Terrasoni sounds very Italian to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure this this book will be a delight when I finish it today or tomorrow. So it's it's fantastic. And the other book I started is not a nonfiction. It's one of the only fiction books so far that I started this month, and that is The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, uh, first published in 1860. Um, if you follow my channel for any length of time, you know that uh, this year I had this uh, project. Yeah, I'm trying to uncrumble the t-shirt. Uh, not very successfully, <laughs> it turns out. But anyway, so I, I have this project for 2021 to read all of George Eliot's novels, uh, not necessarily in chronological order, because I had already read Middlemarch um, and Silas Marner. Um, so just in, you know, no particular order. And there is this one left, uh, which I will definitely finish in November. And then I have one more, Felix Holt, The Radical, which I will read in December. Um, this is about uh, uh, two siblings, uh, a girl, Maggie, and her brother, Tom, uh, living in a mill on the floss. The floss is a river um, with um, their family and the coming of age of both siblings, the hardship that they experience uh, financially when things don't, don't go the way they had hoped or the family had hoped. It's a broader picture also of the family relations. Uh, the mother has um, various sisters. You know, it's, it's, it's your typical tapestry of rural life that you know from George Eliot. I am um, about halfway through, so I started it um, last weekend and about halfway through, almost, no more than halfway. I don't know. It's very, very slow in the beginning. Um, I, I, the language and the descriptions are just wonderful. So that's what keeps me going, me being a very plot-oriented reader. And if nothing happens and you feel that something is going to happen, but it will take a long time, it's not my favorite kind of storytelling. Uh, but George Eliot's language is just wonderful. And I, I do a, an audiobook, a print book combo, um, and the audio um, is, yeah, I forgot the, I think it's Laura Preston, who is narrating, and it's just really, really well done, also with the little bit of accent and, you know, change of voices. So that's that's an absolute delight. But the story, I don't think this will be my favorite George Eliot story. But we'll see. There's still, uh, there's still a portion of the book to go. Anyway, so these were the books that I finished that I'm still reading and that I started this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm very much looking forward to your comments. Let me know what you are reading this week, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.